talking to the kids this week about uh, fight the good fight. Uh, we're reminding them we are at war. No, not the kind of war you see in Ukraine, not the kind of war this world talks about, but a spiritual war. We're in a war, and for that, they have to be what? Prepared. Uh, if you're going to go on vacation, how many would get prepared? If you're going to go on a job interview, how many would get prepared? If you're going to go play in a basketball game, how many would get prepared? I mean, you get prepared for everything. Should we be prepared for this? <laughs> and by the way, let's be clear. We are in a war, and how long has this war been going on? Have you ever? How many ever you know, talk, everybody heard about the Hundred Years' War? Just think about that for a minute. How many, can you imagine there being a Hundred Years' War? How long have we been at this war, though? <laughs> well, even before that, because this warfare really goes back to when? To Adam and Eve, to the garden. It goes back to then when the Satan himself said, hey, I am at war with God, therefore I'm going after who? I'm going after his people. I'm going after Adam. I'm going after Eve. I'm going to take away their blessing. I'm going to interfere with their relationship with God. And that's when the first shot, you know, like the shot heard around the world at Bunker Hill, right? That was the first shot where Satan said, I'm going after these people. I declare war against them as I wage war against God. And he's been fighting us. And how we've been doing? <laughs> In fact, what tool did he use in that war? Lies. In fact, he's still lying today, isn't he? And that's really what we're going to look at today, is the lies that prevent us from being properly prepared for this war. And they're all found in one spot in that nice. <laughs> they're all found in Ephesians 6, but first I want you to go one place for me. Everybody go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Uh, have you guys gotten there on Sunday school yet? Okay. <laughs> Wasn't sure. Colossians chapter 2. Before we get into this preparing for battle, you need to remember this. Colossians chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 13. And you, who's he talking about? You, me, all of us. You, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So one point I want to make before we start is, as we look toward this war, we have to remember, what do we bring to the table? If you were going to war and said, okay, we've got 10,000 people on the other side, and you have 10,000 on your side, how many would feel pretty good? Well, if they said, yeah, but 9,999 of them are dead, what would you feel then? A little less? <laughs> what do dead people bring to the battle? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a smell, yeah. <laughs> That's all they're bringing, right? They're called a casualty, right? And the worst kind of casualty, because it's not like they're wounded, they are dead, right? And that's where we are. That's what we bring to the battle, is we were dead, but we are then made alive through who? Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. All of our sins were nailed to that cross, and the blood of Jesus Christ washed away how much of them? All of them. 100%. It's not up to us. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot keep ourselves saved. It is all through the blood of Jesus Christ, and by His grace, and by His mercy. So what do we bring to the table? Somebody who he's made alive, <laughs> somebody he's given a life to, somebody he's forgiven, right? Emphasis on who? Him. Verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And that's, you know, back in that time, people were very familiar with what he just said. When you went, you were a Roman general, and you went and you conquered. 
conquered a land, conquered a king, conquered something. What did you then do? You brought them back, their army, their general, you brought them back, and you paraded them through town. <laughs> Bound and all, you brought them and paraded them through town with the horns blowing and the people yelling and screaming the name and saying, hey, he has won, he has defeated the enemy. That's what Jesus Christ did. Openly on that cross, he said, it is what? Finished. The battle is over. The war is over. We've won through the blood of Jesus Christ. He has gotten the victory. And I want you to get this mindset, these two mindsets in you from the start. We bring nothing to the table except faith in him. And second of all, he's already won. So as the other side sits there, and I don't know if you've ever seen movies where they got the, you know, all the people just yelling and screaming and pounding their shields and you know, yelling and screaming, and that's what the world's doing, right? What are we doing? We, we've already won. So, <laughs> so do we got to be yelling and screaming back? We got to be you know, getting ourselves all prepared for war. No, it's what? Well, we've already won. Jesus Christ has already won, hasn't he? and openly declared it so all may know. So we've already won, and we have it through faith in Jesus Christ alone. But is there still battles? Absolutely. See, Satan doesn't just give up. He doesn't sit there and say, oh, I'm sorry, Derek got saved, so I guess I'll leave him alone now. <laughs> no, 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 no. In fact, he says, no, this means I'm going to focus on him. Because what? Is he going to try to take away your salvation? Oh, he can't do that. So what does he want to do? He wants to make you ineffective. Yeah, he wants to make you a terrible soldier for Christ. He wants to make you a terrible witness for Christ. He wants, to sit to, he wants you to quit. He wants you to back off. He wants you just to live a life that's pleasing to Satan, not to God. Not giving him any glory. He wants you just to be terrible, and that's the battle now. The battle is over what we do for Christ. And Satan is going to come after us. And I want us to look today at some lies that he will tell us to try to get us to be that way. To get us to quit. To get us to do nothing. To get us to live according to the ways of this world. To do those kinds of things. And how can we prepare and make sure that doesn't happen? How many want to, just right off the bat, understand that it's going to be because of God, not because of us? <laughs> All right? Well, let's go to that now. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. If you're in Colossians, make a quick left. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to start in verse 10. And just keeping in mind, this is a letter that Paul is writing to Christians in Ephesus. Ephesus was the epicenter of the worship of Diana. In fact, when Paul went there on his the third journey. Uh, basically, when he went there, there was a huge battle with the silversmiths who made the little idols for Diana. They brought his friends, Gaius and Aristarchus, they brought them before the court. They, they tried to shut them down, and they have been under tremendous persecution. As he's writing this to them, they've been, they've been in the battle. They've had people die physically. They've had people beat up, thrown in prison. This has been tough times. They understand the war goes on, that the world is trying to shut down the word of God, trying to shut down the truth, trying to turn people away from the truth of the word of God. They're trying that. And he says to them here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, Satan will sit there and say, You're pretty strong. You're pretty smart. You're kind of a dynamic person. You can do it. You can defeat Satan. You can defeat that world. You can do it. That's called a what? A lie. Because <laughs> he says what? We need to go and we need to be strong. Yes, be strong. In what? In the Lord. <laughs> 
not in ourselves, not in our wits, not in our charisma, not in our intelligence, not in our abilities and our skills. If we try to go out and battle this world with our own philosophies and our own mind and our own abilities and our own skills, frankly, we're going out unarmed. But if we go in the might of God, who can stand against it? This is like when Jesus came to Joshua, right? As they were about to go into the promised land, as they were just about to do that, he says, hey, Moses is dead. You're in charge, Joshua. Be what? Be strong and courageous. Again, I say, be strong and very courageous. Finally, I say, be strong and courageous. The Lord is with you whithersoever you go. Be strong in who? Because frankly, if God's on your side, does it matter how many other people there are? Does it matter what the foe says? No. Be strong in the Lord. But if you try to get it out there on your own, remember the Israelites when they finally said, yeah, we'll go on the land. We'll just go on by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I know we turned against God. God says he's not going to go with us, but we can go in and we'll take it. They lost miserably. Don't go on your own might. Don't go in your own strength. Go in the might of the Lord. Don't listen to Satan says you're good enough. You're strong enough. You can handle this on your own. You cannot. But can you handle it with God? Absolutely. Be strong in the Lord. Then comes the second one, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. And we actually looked at this last week. As Satan comes after us, what is he going to come after with us? Lies temptations, distractions. We actually did an entire series just looking at the letter D <laughs> of all the things Satan's going to come after us for, right? Distract us and take us out of the way with all kinds of lies and things like that, deceptions and things. He, he's going to come after us. And sometimes it's going to feel like we are overwhelmed and we cannot withstand this. We cannot possibly get through this. We cannot possibly do this. Well, if we are being strong in the Lord, what does God say? Not only can you, but you will. You will overcome. You will stand. Sometimes we may feel like Elijah. Remember Elijah? Especially after you have that tremendous victory on Mount Carmel against the idol worshipers of Baal and the thunder come, lightning coming down, devouring. Everything was so wonderful. And then he got the letter from Bathsheba. I'm going to kill you by tomorrow. What did I, what did I say? Oh, Bathsheba. That's a, sorry about that. Edit that out. In the, in the edit. It'll, it'll be better. Jezebel. And then what? I wanted to die. He said, I quit. I'm the only one left. Everybody's against me. Everybody hates me. I might as well go eat some worms, right? Like the old song says. He wanted to quit. And Satan wants to do that too. He wants to so overwhelm us with the things going on in this world, things going on in our life, temptations in this world, and failures that we've done, and mistakes we have made, and the guilt that can overcome. And he wants us to take all of that on, put it on our own shoulders, and say, you can't possibly win. But what did we just read? Who's already won? Jesus Christ has already won. How many of those past failures and mistakes that we've made has God already paid for? All of them. <laughs> Yeah, and the future one. And, and is he going to be able to keep us from temptation? Is he going to be able to keep, is he strong enough to help us and be able to stand against the wiles of the devil? Can he do that? Because Satan's going to, see, he's going to keep piling on, piling on, piling on. But remember, God is with you wherever you go. And will he ever allow Satan to pile too much? No. He will protect you. He will help you. And you will Stand. The other thing he wants you to do, if he can't get you to quit, <laughs> he wants you to say, well, that's just the way it is. In fact, why don't we just start going back to the ways of the world? Why don't we just start looking for the pleasures of this world? Why don't we just go back and do that? Kind of like the Israelites. Remember the Israelites when they came out of Egypt? By whose power and whose might did they come out of Egypt? God's hand, right? Who got them across that Red Sea? God did. 
But then they started having problems. No water, no food. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I want this. I want the runions. I mean, you know. And what was their temptation? Oh, we can't do this. We can't get there. We can't, we can't make it across this wilderness. We can't get there. We might as well go back. Even when they got to the promised land for two years, God had taken care of everything they needed. Every single time. Against every enemy, against everything. They got there and they saw what was in that land. There's giants in the land. There are gigantic cities in this land. We cannot do it. And therefore they said, let's go back. Satan wants to do the same. He wants to overwhelm you so you quit or you go back. Yeah? And that's what it would do, wouldn't it? Nullify our light. Our witness. He wants to do that. What, what do we know, though? If we have his strength, if we have on his armor, we can withstand, can't we? We can withstand anything he throws at us as long as we are standing in his might, God's might, and putting on his armor, which we'll look at again in a minute. So don't believe the lie that it's all too much. You can't make it. You'll never be able to stand. In God, can we stand firm? Yeah. Absolutely. Let's go to verse 12. Lie number three. <laughs> Where we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a big deal nowadays, folks. Who is the fight against? It's not against people. <laughs> not against people. And boy, that's a, that is Satan's great trick right now. If I can get all the Christians to fight against... Muslims or Presbyterians, <laughs> Methodists, Catholics. If I can get them fighting amongst themselves and battling each other over even the you know, color of the carpet or whether we should have musical instruments or what songs we can sing. If I can get them fighting against Muslims and Mormons and Jews and people out there. If I can get them fighting against atheists. I can get them, I can get them in a culture war. I can get them hating uh, homosexuals and the pornographers and things like that. I can get them fighting against this and I can get them fighting against that. Who are we not fighting? The enemy. Who's the enemy? Satan. Satan. <laughs> it's Satan. He's the one attacking. He's the one. All the rest of that, all those other people that he wants us fighting. He wants us fighting against governments. He wants us fighting against parties, against people. He wants to say they're the enemy. We need to fight against them. We need to destroy them. No. If they are a person doing this, is our job to destroy them? Kill them? I saw a very disturbing video this week that Rick sent me. It was a bunch of Christians at a rally chanting this promise that were reading off the board. And boy, whenever it said we need to destroy, we need to take out, we need to remove, we need to hurt these people. They just got wild. Oh, yes, that's our job. We need to take them out. We need to take over. We need to kill. We need to destroy. We need to get rid of them. We need to eliminate them. We need to get them out. Every single person they were talking about is a what? Human being created by God that Jesus Christ died for and loves. Who are we fighting against? <laughs> We're fighting against the one who has them under their control. We're fighting the one who is making their life and lying to them and cheating them and doing those things. We should look at those people with love and saying, I want the best for you. I want you to know Jesus Christ. I don't hate you. I'm not, I'm not threatened by you either because I got who on my side? <laughs> I got God on my side. I'm not threatened by you. I love you. And I'm going to show you love. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what your politics are. I don't care what your um, proclivities are. I don't care what your sins are. Because how many here are sinners? How many here are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? Who else can be? Anybody. <laughs> That's our job. Remember who the enemy is. Because Satan loves 
us fighting against people who aren't even the enemies, hating people that God loves, focusing on ridiculous things instead of the truth of the word of God. And if we do that, Satan's winning, isn't he? So we got to say, don't fit in that sin. Don't fit into that lie. God loves everybody, doesn't he? He wants them all to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. So don't fall into that. And then finally, in this little group, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. We need God's tools. If you were going to go play football, how many would wear the right equipment? <laughs> I didn't get hurt otherwise. Forget it. <laughs> if you were going to, frankly, if you are going to go play basketball or something, how many would wear the right equipment? I wouldn't go out and play flip-flops, would you? <laughs> I'd have some good shoes on, wouldn't you? <laughs> you need to have the right what? Equipment. And if you were going to go to war, how many would wear the right equipment? Yeah. I always said, if I ever had to go to battle, my request to the quartermaster would be, give me everything. <laughs> if they had a suit that covered me from head to toe, I, you know those guys that go out with the bomb things? That's what I'd want to look like. It's like, dare you to shoot me. <laughs> it's like, I, I won't wear anything. I want to be fast. <laughs> I just want to, I want to be protected. And that's what God offers. He offers full protection from the lies, the temptations, and all of that. But we have to remember, whose tools are they? God's not, not the world's tools. The world's got their own tools. You know what kind of uh, tools the world's got? Lying, propaganda, philosophy, fear. <laughs> There are so many things the world uses to try to win this battle. Should we use those same things? Say it with me. Never, <laughs> N never, <laughs> ever use their tools. Use God's tools. And what are those tools? Now, often when we do this study on this particular part of the Bible, we, we focus a lot on, well, it's a belt, it's a shield, it's a sword. No, I want you to focus on what it is. Let's keep, let's keep going, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The tools are themselves truth and righteousness. And when you're in a battle, there is very little more powerful than those two things. If you're in an argument or people are attacking you for what you believe, if you are standing on truth and doing what is righteous and what is right, what can they say? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> they can sit there and they keep lying and lying and lying. And I've done this before. I've had people just sit there and just yell and scream and say this, that, and the other thing, this lie after this lie after this lie, and I believe this and I want to know this, and I believe, you know, just right down and I put it at the end. You know my response to that? Jesus Christ loved you, died for you, and if you ask him, he will save you. That's, that's the answer. That's the answer to what? Everything, really. <laughs> that's the one thing, no matter what they believe, no matter what they're going through, no matter, that's what they need to know, isn't it, if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Isn't that what they need? Because I can sit there and argue with them on every point. But what's the point? They're not going to get it until they know who is their Savior. Jesus Christ is their Savior. If you stand up in the truth... So you've got some atheist who's sitting there saying, oh, all this is a cosmic ex uh, mistake. It all just kind of happened. Evolution and all is just, just, all, just all accident, right? There's a giant big accident. You know my answer to that is? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the truth. So all the rest of that, have I got to argue on every point? No? 
The truth is, God created the heavens and the earth. You know what? He also sent his son, Jesus Christ, <laughs> to die for you. And if you ask him, he will save you from all your sins. Isn't that the answer? Stand in truth. Don't. The world wants you to go into the gray area, wants you to, you know, little little fib here, a little twist of the truth there to try to make a point. Don't do it. Speak the truth. And how should we act? Righteously. Do what is right in every situation. You say, well, I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah, you do. Whatever shows your love to God and love to that person is what is right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> do what is right. And if you, everything you do is done in the name of God to his glory because you love him, and everything is done because you love that person, what can they then say? But if you're doing it out of hate, if you're saying it out of hate, if you're saying it to hurt or injure, then can they say something? Absolutely. They have a point. That's what Peter says. <laughs> Peter says, don't give them a point. Speak truth. Do what is right. That is our tool against this world and these battles and against Satan, right? But that's not all he gives us. Let's keep going. Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He also gives us, and I've already mentioned it as part of the truth, but the gospel. This is the amazing thing. Uh, if you read through the book of Acts, just, just, just through there. All the times Peter and John and Paul, of course, and Barnabas and Silas, whenever they were attacked lied about, attacked by Jews sometimes, sometimes by Gentile groups, whatever it was. What was their response every single time? Jesus Christ is God who came and died for the sins of the world, and if you ask him to save you, he will save you. They gave them the what? Gospel. They preached Jesus. They didn't, they didn't preach politics. They didn't preach economic theory. They didn't preach hate. They preached the gospel. To whom? Anybody. Everybody. Because <laughs> the gospel has the power, as Paul wrote in Romans, has the power to change people, doesn't it? And if I'm going to argue those other things, it's on deaf ears until they know the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as Savior. So we have a great tool here how many here, by raising your hand, and those at home, raise your hand. I won't see you, but it's okay. How many here know the gospel? That Jesus Christ, God, came and died for our sins. That anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's, it's, that's that simple. I can give you a wordless book if you want to. I can give you a tract, but it's really just that simple, isn't it? We're all sinners. Our penalty is eternal separation from God, but God died for us so that we might be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. I can say it 15 different ways. Every way is true, isn't it? And it all comes back to one fact. We need to be saved. God saves. Right? That's the gospel. That's the good news that the world needs. Stay on message. <laughs> Satan wants to do what? Get us off message. Wants us to talk about other things, talk about other issues, wants to battle and debate other things. What should we always come back to? The truth, doing what's right, and telling people the gospel. Those are the tools we have. But there is more. Let's keep going. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. We also have what? Faith. And this tool is primarily for us. Because as Satan's attacking us, as the world's attacking us, we have this little word called doubt can come into our head. Maybe I'm not saved. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe uh, I can't withstand this. Maybe they're right. Maybe it's, that's true. Maybe by faith we can go back to what? 
the truth. By faith, we can go back to what? The gospel. By faith in God, knowing that he is truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is who he is. He loves us. He will never let us go. He will never depart from us. We are his children. We don't have a, an, a fear of him ever turning against us. We are his children and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are blessed in him. By his work, we are saved. By what? Faith through grace. Right? We know these things. Go back to that faith. And by the way, as we show faith, that makes us a better light to the world too, doesn't it? So it's primarily for us, but as we're whacking away all these things, the world will take notice, won't they? That our faith is strong. Not only that, but verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So let's take salvation and the word of God. Again, two excellent tools. And that salvation, you notice, does protect the head, doesn't it? And it is that knowledge of salvation. What did we read today in our response to reading from 1 John? You know that you are saved. You know him who is true, and you are in him is true, and you know that you are saved. <laughs> not of our works, not of anything we do, not because of us, but because he has promised. And can God lie? Can God be mistaken? Can God be stopped? <laughs> no. So, so we know. We know we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And know that salvation. Again, that protects us from those lies that come into our ears and those thoughts that come into our head. Keep that on there. And then also, of course, the Word of God. Use the truth of the Word of God. Ever know, don't know how to respond to somebody? Use the Bible. <laughs> That's a great way to do it. Just quote back a Bible verse. <laughs> Go find a Bible verse and write back to them. It's amazing the effectiveness of the Word of God because it is true, isn't it? In fact, when Jesus himself was attacked by Satan in the wilderness after 40 days of fasting, and Satan came in his weakness, his physical weakness, he came and tried to turn him, tried to tempt him three times. What did Jesus use every single time to bat away these attempts by Satan? The word of God. He just told him the truth. Man shall not live by bread alone. <laughs> we only worship the one true God, right? Do not tempt the Lord your God. I mean, he just quoted the script. Now, Satan even tried to twist the scripture. <laughs> but he said what? No, this is the truth. He went back to what? The truth. Use the word of God. Know the word of God. These are tools we have to combat all these things in the world. So are you ready? <laughs> Satan's in here. He's, he's lying to you. He's saying, oh, no, you can do it yourself. Don't, don't follow that. Be strong in the Lord. He's sitting there saying, oh, no, you can't withstand. You can't, you can't win this. You can't get through this. Oh, yeah, we can when we're strong in the Lord. Oh, no, the fight's over here. The fight's over there. You got to be fighting this. You got to be fighting that. You got to be fighting this. No, fight the lies of Satan. Fight him and what? Oh, you don't need all these tools. You don't need to use truth. You don't need to do what's right. You don't need the word of God. You don't, you don't really need the faith. You don't really need the gospel. Let's talk about other things. What does God say? I gave you those for a reason. Because <laughs> with these, you can stand. With these, you will have the victory, won't you? In these battles that go on, knowing that you do have that eventual victory, don't we? That's guaranteed. But in the battles, we have these. And then finally, we need... Let's put it down there in big letters. We need help. There's an old saying, there, there are no atheists in foxholes. Because <laughs> we're talking about being prepared here for war, but when the temptations start flying, uh, when the accusations, when the doubts start flying, when all the things and the bombs are blowing, blow up, <laughs> blasting all around us in the middle of the war, we need what? Help. We need help. 
Who can we go to for help in these battles? Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Who can we talk to, folks? God. Go to God. Seek the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Seek the help of the Holy Spirit. Seek the power of the Holy Spirit. Seek the help of the Father. Help the guidance of our shepherd, the Son of God. Go to God. Pray to Him. Seek His peace in the middle of the battle. Seek His strength in the middle of the battle. Seek His help to make sure we're using these things that we're supposed to be using and standing in His power. Ask Him, praying always. Always. In good times and bad, always praying. Praying. But then he also says this, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for one another. So not only should we be going to him for help for us, but we ought to be going to him for help to who? Others, and them praying for us, and us helping each other in the middle of the battle. You're not on your own. There is no situation where God's going to sit there and say, okay, you, I need you to take on the world. Go. Wham. Good luck. He is with us, and he has also surrounded us with a team, right? Fellow soldiers, <laughs> fellow combatants who have the same general, the same word, the same equipment, the same goal, the same enemy. And we need to help each other. And when you see one falling down, when you see one tripping up, when you see one harm, what do you do? Pray for them, help them, go, encourage them, right? God will get us through, but the battles can be intense. Help each other. Pray for one another. Pray to God for help, because we need help, don't we? Even with all this, we need help. So keep going to him. So as we prepare for war, let's make sure we're not listening to the lies. Satan, I don't mind saying this, is a dirty, rotten liar. Okay? Just, that's fact. <laughs> so, make sure you're not listening to these lies. So somehow you can do it on your own, or you don't need God, or you don't need that, or, you, or I'm fighting this over here. No. This is the truth. We are strong in the Lord. We will win, and we can withstand the onslaught with God's help. We are fighting against Satan, not against the things of this world, and we need to have his tools, using them constantly, Keep them about you. Keep them in your mind and in your heart. And we need help. So go to him in prayer. Pray for one another. Help one another as we go along. And then we will have great success, won't we? Then we'll be able to get through this. And we can start having some victories. Remember, God said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against God's church. <laughs> We're going to win. But how many agree there's a lot more people out there that need to be saved? Yes. There are a lot of societies out there that need to be changed. Yeah, a lot of hearts need to be changed. We can do that when we're fighting. But to do that, we've got to be prepared first of all. Make sure we're doing it the right way. Let's pray.